An all-new Eye on the Bay in HD starts right now. Welcome to Eye on the Bay. I'm Brian Hackney, and I am at one of my favorite places in the Bay Area. The question is, where am I? I mean, in this age of celebrity, where can you come to see real stars? Some heavenly bodies. A place that's absolutely out of this world. And a place that could grip the imagination of your children and change their lives especially with a new and fascinating planetarium program, part of which we'll unveil on Eye on the Bay tonight. The Chabot Space and Science Center may be in the Oakland Hills with a commanding view of the Bay Area, but some of what we're exploring is going to take place under Maya skies, a brand new exhibit at Chabot. Let's go back to the time when my ancestors built this great city in the jungle. But before we get to that, we have to get to this. What is the Chabot Space and Science Center. How did Chabot get its start? Uh, 1883, uh, a telescope was bought for the Oakland Unified School District. This very telescope, christened Leah, a wealthy Bay Area businessman named Anthony Chabot donated it. Originally, the telescope was in downtown Oakland at Lafayette Park. The Chabot Observatory moved a couple of times, acquired a couple more telescopes, and finally landed here, amidst the redwoods and the hills high above Oakland. The observatory lengthened its name to the Chabot Space and Science Center and widened its vision beyond the spectacular views afforded by the telescopes, as staff astronomer Ben Burris explains. The mission of Chabot Space and Science Center is to spark the next generation of, uh, of our leaders, you know, our scientists and, and other types of leaders, you know, with, with hands-on exhibits that just open their eyes like that. Obviously, it's for kids of all ages. And Chabot offers educational programs. All right, fantastic. So the mission has officially begun. That we'll going, explore guys. later going, in the show. Guys, you're, all your teams are online and ready to go. In fact, if you want, if you've got enough of a child within, you can climb into a spacesuit, just like Eye on the Bay correspondent Dave Stelk. You know, Brian, everyone sees the big fire, the flame, the rockets, how you get into space. But what do you do once you're there? You mean beyond blast off? That's what this exhibit's all about. How about to live in space? Here's some actual samples of food that Soviet cosmonauts took into space. Yum. You can also see what you would look like if you were weightless in space. All you gotta do is jump for joy. Now, this thing right here lets you feel what it's like to work and live in little or no gravity. Now, you see them work on the space shuttle and it looks easy, but here's how it works. You go to turn a lever, you go one way, you turn the other. There's no resistance. The simplest tasks are difficult. And it's kind of fun here at the Chabot Space and Science Center. Ah. There's also a space capsule inside the space center, this one loaned to us by our friends the Russians. It's just one big, ugly, flying tank. And yet, even though it's been manufactured since the 1960s, that's going to be our only access to the International Space Station once the shuttle goes out of business. And it looks small, but inside, there's actually room for three cosmonauts. Man, how do you go to the bathroom in space? Well, you know, Brian, they say here at the Chabot Space and Science Center that the number one question asked is, well, how do you go number one in space? And the number two question is, well, how do you do number two? Ladies and gentlemen, a space toilet. There's no water in space. What you have is what you brought with you. But the Russians pioneered a way to purify a cosmonaut's uh, liquid waste into drinking water. A system like this is currently installed on the International Space Station. It's the ultimate in recycling. You get rid of it, and then you use it again. This is all great, but wouldn't it also be fabulous if Chabot had a time machine? Because then you could go back and see some of the world's earliest astronomers. I did a few years ago. Um, here we are at Tazumel, or Tozumel. 
What was cool about that trip was seeing the relics of the old pyramids. The problem is you can't see the pyramids the way they used to be unless you walk through these doors. And the doors lead into here, Chabot's Full Dome Digital Planetarium. And you talk about the greatest show on Earth. They've got a brand new one. And is it shocking? The movement of the sun, the moon, and the stars guided the lives of my ancestors, the Maya. Tales of the Maya Skies is the tale of an ancient civilization, the Maya, who were able to see deep into the heavens and far into the future. In the bygone city of Chichen Itza, in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the Maya people studied astronomy. Wow! That was remarkable. And the woman to my left is the person who actually produced this. This is Conda Mason. Conda, that's a beautiful job. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Did you guys actually go to Chichen Itza to, you know, get some of the data about the ancient pyramids about this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A big crew was sent, actually, um, about three years ago. They laser scanned all the ruins that are there now. And so all of that data then goes back and goes into the computer when we come back. And through research, intensive research and the scanning, they literally were able to recreate what those ruins, what those temples look like when they were first built. Without laying a finger on them. Without laying a finger on it and to the exact measurements. Mm -hmm. Immersed in Chabot's Full Dome Planetarium, the audience travels back in time to 500 AD when the Maya studied the skies and predicted future events. By foretelling an eclipse, our astronomers demonstrated their knowledge of our connection with the grand order of the skies. And the achievements of the Maya is so huge. They were able to predict eclipses, they, their astronomy uh, and their, their notice of, of Venus and all of and its movement in the sky. They created the, the zero, which allowed them to count into millions. They, their counting system, their calendar, as we all know, everybody's pretty much somewhat familiar with the Mayan calendar and its accuracy. Their accuracy back then is so startling for a people who had no modern instruments like we have today. It's been the best experience and the best project I've ever worked on, actually. Well, Conda Mason, congratulations. You must be excited as the producer I of am, this. It was I a real am. pleasure meeting Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay, and on the subject of education, in a moment, I on the Bay correspondent Dave Stelk will learn something for himself as we continue to explore Chabot Observatory. One more thing before we take a break. In addition to the Maya skies, there are also tales of the Oakland skies. When Anthony Chabot donated that first telescope over 125 years ago, he did so under the stipulation that the public will always have access to it. So to this day, the Chabot Space and Science Center offers free telescope viewings. Stay tuned as Eye on the Bay's galactic tour of the Chabot Space and Science Center continues. Yeah. 